It was no secret that Taylor's standing rigging was in need of replacing. We've been doing daily checks whilst crossing the Atlantic and weekly checks since. And although we had got the go ahead from the guys at All Spars whilst in the UK. He said it was all looking in great condition apart from the mast. They've given a little few pointers as to things we can improve, but like, tiny things like just adding some packers and tightening some bits and yeah, it's minimal. The rust was worsening and we didn't feel comfortable sailing further until we had replaced it. And that was why we had sailed to Le Marin in Martinique, the boat work hub of the Caribbean. We had received a quote from a company here last week but it was slightly out of our budget. So we're booked in for Thursday and it's Tuesday tomorrow, but we're not going to be able to do it because we can't afford it. It kind of sucks saying that. But it's come to pretty much 7,000 euros just for our main mast. So yeah, out of our budget. And we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because across the Atlantic we knew we wanted to replace it. And then we got here and we kept saying, in Martinique, that's like the cruising hub, we'll replace it. And so we've been waiting here for two weeks to get this quote, and now we've got it, and it's just so much money. I'm not quite sure what's the best thing now. So we felt a bit at a loss until... So we just got a call from the rigging place here, and they said that there's a chance they kind of overquoted us, because it's better to overquote than underquote, so they think it could be almost half the price less so we're gonna head there now to the dock and they're gonna have a look and after lunch and see how much they actually think it's gonna be fingers crossed this is gonna be a bit of a cheaper quote please amazing so our luck I don't know is it luck Everything happened once. something has turned and changed because this morning I was feeling really quite down in the dumps and just the last few days I think it's weighed heavy on us that we couldn't afford the rigging and we just spoke to the owner of the business so nice and he's agreed that we can do most of the work ourselves and he won't charge us any labour costs in order to do the job properly. On the proviso that he does the absolute final check. And the quote was a lot higher because he hadn't seen the rig yet so he didn't want to undercharge, uh, yeah. like uncharge and have to charge more so he said it shouldn't be nearly as much. Yeah, everything is turning a corner and another really exciting thing happened. We got a parcel and a new induction hob has come. So we couldn't get one out here because we needed a British plug and it's exactly the same one. Oh yes, she's a beauty. Look at that. Taylor is complete again. Before we take the Genoa down and get properly cracking on with this rigging replacement, we want to thank today's sponsor, AG1. <laughs> I wonder where all his energy has come from. So as you saw up there, AG1 is my little secret. If you haven't heard of it before, AG1 is comprehensive daily nutrition made powerfully simple. It's made up of 75 high quality whole food sourced ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. For the last few months, AG1 has made its way into our morning routines on board as a way of starting the day right and ensuring we stay as healthy as possible. Especially here in Le Marin, where we've been working on the rigging, electronics and painting and we've been pretty flat out. Not only do I find I have more energy when drinking AG1, but because I'm receiving all my key nutrients, my energy is sustained throughout the day. What's more is that it's really an effortless daily habit. Just one scoop of AG1 in eight ounces of water every day, that's it. If you want to join us in taking control of your health in the simplest way possible, head over to athleticgreens.com forward slash daily drive, where you can get a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2 and five free travel packs for your first purchase. Thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video. This morning we're making the most of being on a dock and we're going for an early morning walk. Yeah, we haven't been able to do this since 
Johnny Harbour, three months. Basically. Is it Johnny Harbour? Yeah, we haven't been to another dock, have we? No, we not, but no, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and we're starting work today, aren't we? We're going to yeah. become riggers. Yeah, I think we did the week. lower shrouds today. Yeah. Well, I think that's what he'll get us to do because it'll be kind of the easier ones to do. And there's four of those, but I think what we're doing, we'll run the halyards down, take off two of the lowers, give them to them, they'll measure think, them up. I think he said just one at a time. Yeah. And then just give them one, measure it up. It will make it all, give it back to us. We put the new one in. Bish, we'll bash, bosh. So it'd be nice to get all the lowers done today. And then maybe some of the other ones, but I don't know. We shall see. We're going to be employees for the next few days, so that's very exciting. They'll learn lots of good skills. We don't need to run any lines or anything like that. Yeah. Because we do opposites. So we're going to do one of these and then the front one there. We don't need to run lines at all. Mm. Zach just spoke to him and he said, basically, what we need to do is we just disconnect two at the same time. <laughs> that are opposites and we just take them off and give them to him. And I've got to be up there. <laughs> I'm really nervous. I hope the mask doesn't pull down. I mean, he said it would be fine, but like... Okay, down slowly. Yeah, nice. How loose is it now? Pretty loose. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look much different. You know what you're doing, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, you gotta stir it, yeah? If I feel it's all like it's wobbling, I come straight down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, the pin's out, Zach. One lower shroud was off, and now so was the backstay. But it's just as well we decided to run that halyard because. We need to look like this. The, your, the boss said do um, this one and then that one together. Oh, I thought you you take them as off. Yeah, I, I just tell you, if you give me a, a D1 back, D1 on the front, yeah. really the back step before we do that. You can tell them. <laughs> so, essentially, our deal with Tower of Marion here is that they will provide the wires if we get them off and give them to them, and they will teach us how to. Anyway, there was um, a small miscommunication, <laughs> and essentially, Zach spoke to someone and they said, okay, you need to take opposites off. And so take two off at a time, bring us two, and we'll give you back two. So we took one of the smaller wires off and then the opposite side, which was the backstay. But we wanted to take the backstay off. It was meant to be just the equivalent. So we've got four smaller shrouds um, holding up the mast, two on the starboard, two on the um, port side. And he was meaning opposites in there, not opposites like that. Anyway, so, yeah, we took those off and they came out and he was like, oh. And I was at the top of the ma mast when he was like, oh no, you don't do that unless you're taking the mast off. And I was at the top. <laughs> so I like paused and was like. But he said, he said the only issue with that would be in that situation that it would warp the mast, but the mast looks fine. Yeah, it did look a little bit like a banana for a little bit, but we quickly loosened the other backstay and it sorted it out. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it wasn't too ideal. I ended up with a bit of a, a war room because it came down really quick um, but luckily we did run a uh, we did run a halyard down to where the backstay goes just in case and just as well we did because well I don't want to know what will happen if we didn't but mm -hmm. we did we used our initiative Zach we messed up a little bit but we used our initiative and we the mask is still up yeah it's all fine it's all fine <laughs> but yeah hurdle number one well it wasn't even the hurdle it was just like a uh, moment number one but we're fine, and the boat's fine, and the mast is fine, and it's all fine. So. They're so nice. Look how shiny they are. So, so, <laughs> they're unbelievably nice. Yeah. Oh, they don't fit. <laughs> no. Okay, back, it's coming down.
it's good, eh? It's so smooth compared to the other ones. The other ones are just like, you can feel the rust on them. Oh, oh, the. I don't know if you can see the colour of that, but there's still no wires fraying here. No. But they've but... lost their luster, they're rusting here, they're still green here, and yeah, they're just definitely in need of replacing. How did our second day of rig? Give me a minute. <gasps> the new ones look so much better than these. <laughs> they're so gone, I don't know if you can see on camera really, but... Yeah, they are goners. I think we always knew they looked bad, or well, not that well. They didn't look as good as they should, but putting them next to brand new ones is like... Nine day. Nine. Second day, went well. It's exhausting being a rigger. <laughs> yeah, I think the lower shrouds are gonna be the most difficult ones that we've got, because they're really awkward to get in and do the work, because there's the plate, the plate that they sit yeah. on on the mast is like that, and you've got to get in this little gap to fiddle with it. But then the back stays are open and really mm -hmm. easy to do. The fore stay is going to be a lot, good bit of work. So you've got to take down the whole furling system. And then the ones on the spreaders might be interesting. I don't know what the mount is. Don't get the top for those. Oh, that, mm, they look a bit awkward, the top ones for the spreaders. But And we've got to see how they're actually connected to the spreaders. Because they yeah. said they, we might need them for that. So, yeah. Yeah, we're like kind of halfway yeah we've I done guess. four and we've got and then the back stays being made the back stays are being made one two three four five yeah we've got five left so we're just under halfway so we should get the back stays tomorrow mm -hmm. it definitely takes longer than we thought we thought we'd have done those and the back stays by the end of today and we've just done it's four but we had to dremel out um the hole to fit these these old ones are imperial and they're about 13 millimeters which is i think that'd be like one or half an inch, I think these would be. Yeah, I, I think that looks about half an inch to me. Mm. Um, and the new ones that they've only got here, the closest size, they've got a uh, slightly <laughs> bigger than these. So yeah. they basically drill out the slots at the top. Uh, yeah, and using their Dremel. And I don't think we got it on camera, but at one point the air to the, the compressor to the Dremel got loose and was like, it blew Zach's hat off. Can you hear out your ear? Yes, yeah, fine. It uh, went, like, jetted in Zach's well, it ear. It knocked my hat off. It knocked his hat off, and it was like... And then dropped down. And then dropped down to the floor. All in a day's work. I think we're going to sleep really well tonight. So, we just had our backstairs dropped off. Let's have a look at them compared to the old ones, because they're so much nicer. So these are the old ones we've got at the moment. See, it's really just tarnished and horrible. These and the new ones. So nice. climbing thing but we've got it rolling hitched on as well and it's not supporting me this is only supporting this and this isn't particularly heavy yeah um, this line which you're going to pass me down the old line with yeah, your then, bag of goodies and then actual line back up line and then three pliers and then all the other stuff i need to rig this one up yeah perfect happy you've got it cup of tea first <laughs> coming down.
Voilà, push, push. <laughs> You don't think that end cap is too corroded up there, do you? No, I think it's right. Okay. Do we need to loosen that side as well or not? Yeah, and this one's good here, like this, going through the spreader? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's okay. I just want to make sure after last. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, that's really on that. No, I've got it. So Zach is just up the mast at the moment, trying to get off the end caps for the these shrouds then we will give them one of those and then we will hopefully receive one back and then we'll do exactly the same with this one and then we've only got one more to go which is the force day crazy at the moment it's almost dark but zach is up the mast and we're at a bit of a standstill because the bolt won't come out of the cap shroud that's not what it's called the cap over the shroud <laughs> yeah so He's just waiting. Our friend next door on this catamaran is passing tools over and got a blowtorch down here. He just gave a go. Don't char your eyebrows. It is, it... But nothing's really working. So we might need a impact driver tomorrow. Well, he's got an impact driver. He doesn't know whether he's got a six more bit. So yeah, fingers crossed we can get this off. But it's getting pretty late. So I don't reckon we'll finish it tonight. I think if you ever think of boat jobs, just double the time you think it will take to do the job and then maybe add 10% too, just for the Caribbean. <laughs> okay, I lied, he's now going up with a hammer drill. Nah, we'll give it a go in the morning then. Yeah. yeah. It's 7.45 and we are really determined to get this bolt out of the spreaders. Literally the second we stepped out, it just started raining, so we're just waiting for it to pass. So it's just a cloud, you can see blue skies ahead, so yeah, hopefully it Eager passes. Down. Yeah. But we rigged up this little tarp again and actually it's so nice to be able to be outside and actually... These are hat to serve and... To be honest, it had been going quite well, except for the backstay hiccup on the first day. But now we're running into some issues. You know when Becca asked whether the port side cap was corroded? You don't think that end cap is too corroded up there, do you? And I confidently said no. No, I think it's right. Okay. Well, it was. And it snapped tightening the bolt in after putting on the new shroud. Our cap for our spreader just snapped in half, so... Yeah, it's really annoying. Meaning we now had to undo everything we had done over the last few days. Take both the spreaders off and add new caps and put them back up again. So. Nice. This is the old cap shroud yeah. order, I guess, for spreader and I've just uh, ground down this one so it fits. It almost fitted, but it's a little bit dirty now because I've been working with it. But That's why we can clean it. We'll clean it up, but it just needs to be riveted and put on now. Nice. So just come in for the day because it's getting dark. And it's really raining, as you can hear. Yeah, dropped a screwdriver in at the last minute, so both feeling a little bit down in the dumps. But yeah, it's just been one of those days. Tomorrow's a new day, and hopefully, we should keep making progress tomorrow. Once the spreaders and new cap shrouds were back on, We decided to do our own mini rigging check to make sure we had successfully replaced pin to pin. However, it's just as well we checked as we noticed we hadn't swapped out the bridle plate for the backstays. So just when we thought we were nearly done, back down came both stays. Okay, pull. Interesting. Is that done before? The biggest one we've got. Maybe more tension. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Ah, simple. Yay. 
<laughs> With the four stay off at the base, it was time to lower it down. But that doesn't mean we're out of the four stay woods yet. There was still a clever's pin up there which just wouldn't come out. Okay, good luck. Yay. I should let it cool down. This was our, um, what do you call this? I wouldn't call it a shack or whatever. Maybe a shack or whatever. This is at the top of the Genoa and there is this pin going through it and it's taken me hours to get this thing out because I had to angle grind this in the end to get it out because if you look at all of these ones, so that fits in really nicely. This one fits in nicely, but if you look at this one, that's an end that I haven't cut as well, so there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. It doesn't, it doesn't actually go in. So that is warped, or you can see yeah. a slight deformation in that. Mm -hmm. So something's happened with that. Crazy. What's happening today? Everything, apparently. That's why the boat's an absolute mess at the moment. We're just filling up all the water. Because hopefully this afternoon we'll get back our roller furler and force day and get it all fitted back up. But what's the chances of getting it back? I don't know, he said come back to them at 12. They're really busy at the moment, so I'm hoping they get back to us today. Because if not, we're not going to get it all installed until Tuesday because Monday's back holiday. And we probably won't end up leaving until Wednesday. Which will mean we're here for two weeks. Yeah. And how long did we think we were originally going to be here? Four days. Yeah. I think we were thinking three days maybe, um, but yeah, everything takes longer in the Caribbean. And on the boat. And on the boat. Yeah. Oh well, it'd be nice to get back onto anchor. Yeah, I can't wait to go for a swim. It's sweaty. That's what I can't wait for. The water here is just not that nice. You know, are you telling me you don't want to go for a swim in the poopy water? Yeah, it's not that nice. <laughs> What did he say? Whilst waiting for our force day to be made, we decided to do a few jobs we've been putting off, including replacing our flag halyards and mousing our anchor shackle. Mousing basically just stops the pin from coming out and yeah, we haven't done it and we've wanted to. We went out looking for stainless steel wire or a stainless steel cable tie, but we couldn't find one. So for now, we've just bought some four mil Dyneema and all I'm gonna do is just tie it, tie it. But in the next few months before fallout, out, we'll order some stainless steel wire and we'll do a proper job at mousing it when we eventually haul out. You want this to be flush like that. It's better for it to be slightly looser, but in line with this, because otherwise if you over tighten it, you can damage this end. So yeah, ours is already lined up nicely, which is very good. And finally, we received our new force day and with the help of some friends, hoisted it back up. Oh, I don't want to dremel it out up here. Bloody Imperial. It even looks, ah, uh, maybe a tiny bit bigger. Okay, Becca, I've got to come down again because this pin isn't long enough that he's giving me. Oh, it's not long enough. You're kidding me. It's not long enough again. Oh, I've got to get this bloody thing out now. No. no, it's not getting like near. You guys are just doing the four stay at the moment and everything, I mean everything, look, wait, it doesn't look that, it's pretty tight at the moment because they've had to pull the mast so far forward. 
but everything is so loose, like all the rigging. It took three grown men and Zach trying to get the pin in. Hopefully it will go, but it's a tight fit. <laughs> it's in. Oh, awesome. At last, the guys came on board for a final rigging check. Well, we could get the Genoa back out of hiding and hoist it back up. Oh, so rigging is complete. What a great feeling. We have bought the guys in Carib Marine some beers just to say thank you because they have been honestly so great with us and we've had so many questions and made a few mistakes and they've come along and helped us out. So yeah, thanks to the guys at Carib Marine for being so great during this whole process. Really hot. Yeah, a little bit. But we are itching to get back onto anchor, so I think we're gonna go drop the beers off and pay for our rigging, and then we're gonna head to St Anne's. We can anchor there, we'll scrub the bottom, have a swim, it will all be very nice, and then, yeah, we'll put her on to the next place.